Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to share with you 10 useful things to have in a toddler's bedroom. I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, so I have had to do two bedrooms for two toddlers. And there have been lots of things I've bought along the years that haven't been any good and just a waste of money but I have found quite a few things that I can't live without now and that have been really helpful to us and useful over the years. So I thought I would share this with you in case you are starting to think about the change that you're gonna make between your baby's bedroom and make it more toddler friendly, or if you have a toddler now and you're just looking for new things that could help or make life easier or things that you may not have thought about having. So I hope you guys find this video interesting or helpful. Please share it with your friends if you enjoy it, if you think they might enjoy it too, and subscribe to my channel if you're new. And now let's get straight into the video. So the first thing I find really helpful to have in my toddler's bedroom is a night light or a night lamp. And for many reasons, one, when they wake up in the night, you don't need to turn on the main light and wake them up fully. And also for your toddler to be a bit more independent and to feel a bit safer in their room if they're scared of the, the dark or when they wake up in the morning, it's still dark and they wanna see what's going on. The one that we have and love is from Ikea and it's a little owl. Um, so it's nice and cute as well for their side table. It's perfectly safe for children. It's designed for children. Um, they can't get into the light to remove the bulbs or play with anything. Um, they can't open it. So it makes me feel a lot more reassured that it's safe for him. And it's plastic. So if it falls, it doesn't break. There's no like glass bulbs in it as well. So yeah, that's my first thing that I recommend having in a toddler's bedroom. The second thing is a grow clock. And if you don't know what a grow clock is, it's a clock that has a sun and the moon and stars in the front. So at night when you turn it on, it turns into the moon and the stars. And every hour that goes by in the night, one star disappears until it's morning time when the sun wakes up. And the point of it is to teach your child to train them to stay in their bedrooms until it's morning time when their son wakes up. You can set the time that they wake in the morning. You can also put it on for nap times to have a different schedule. We are huge fans of the grow clock in our house and my son really responds well to that. Even if he wakes before um, his son is awake, he will stay in his bed until the time that the son wakes up in his grow clock and he's so disciplined. I know that he's a very disciplined child in any case but I think it a lot of children respond to a, gr a grow clock it's a great independence thing for your toddler as well because he doesn't have to ask you is it morning time yet they know when it's morning time and they feel that extra bit of independence so yeah I think my daughter needs one now she's a slightly different type of personality than my son she's a little bit um, less compliant let's say so I'm, I'm interested to see how that's gonna go for her, but it's worked really, really well for my son. The third thing is a video baby monitor. I've always had video baby monitors in my children's rooms since they were tiny little babies. And I feel like it's gonna be a while before I get rid of the baby monitor. It just gives me that extra peace of mind. And in the toddler's bedroom, it has its use for you to see what your toddler is doing in their bedroom when they're not fully asleep yet. So if they're chatting away, singing to themselves, reading storybooks or climbing the the bed or climbing on top of their side table you can see exactly what's going on and you can talk to them and often when James wakes up really early in the morning I just say something to him and say pick up a book and go and read a book and stay in your room until your son wakes with his grow clock and it's great to have that way of communicating with them through the baby monitor and to see what's going on as well. I would definitely recommend spending money on a good baby monitor, good quality one with lots of features that you will use. So the features that I use the most are the temperature monitor, the video capability, the two-way talk and the being able to move the camera remotely from the parent unit. I've had two BT baby monitors and they've both been brilliant. I can have the two kids on one parent unit. The screen is really big, so you know, easy to see everything. 
So yeah, that's my recommended baby monitor and I cannot recommend it enough. Many times when my kids have been ill or they've been sick in their bedrooms, I've been able to cap capture it and see what's going on in the baby monitor and run to their bedrooms and help them. So I feel like a video baby monitor is such a great investment and one probably the best spent money that I've had. Number four, I recommend having a rocking chair or a feeding chair, nursing chair, whatever you call it. I have the IKEA rocking chair and in hindsight, I wish I'd bought a smaller rocking chair because it is quite a big, like, I don't know, it, the legs are too big and yeah, it takes up a lot of space in her room, but I'm not gonna buy a separate rocking chair at the moment. Buying a rocking chair is a cheaper way of getting a nursing chair because sometimes you, if you go to places like mother care, you know, places designated for children's furniture, they will sell you a, um, a glorified rocking chair named nursing chair. A lot of the times they have features like pockets and padded sides and gliding features that are great, but if you wanna save some money, just get a rocking chair. And that will then last you through the babies and toddler years. I still find our rocking chair really, really useful. We have one in Bella's room, so when she wakes in the night, we sit there and kind of, you know, just easier than getting into bed with her or sitting on the floor. And it's a place to sit down and read stories, which you can do throughout the baby, toddler years, and even later on in life. It's just a nice, easy, useful thing to have. My next recommendation is for parents out there who have toddlers who still don't sleep very well through the night. Get a lamp with wireless charging. So if you have a modern phone, like an iPhone that supports wireless charging, there's nothing worse than being stuck in your child's room at night when your phone runs out of battery, because you could be there for a long, long time. So I have this lamp from Ikea as well, which has a built-in table with a wireless charger, and I put my phone on there. So it's like getting two in one, the lamp and the wireless charger. Next, I recommend having a bookshelf. I got ours from Aldi and it was a real, real bargain, but I'm gonna leave a link below to one that I saw on Amazon, which is very, very similar. I don't think they sell the Aldi one anymore. It was one of those like special buys deals that they do. It's a freestanding one. So I find it easier for my children to just choose whichever books they want, rather than having a bookshelf that's on the wall that they can't reach. Um, so that way they are much more independent, being able to choose what stories they want and to tidy it up after they make a mess. It promotes independent reading and makes them feel more independent as well. Another thing I recommend is having a sofa bed. Even if you have a tiny room for your toddler, you can still get a sofa bed. The one we have is from Amazon and it's been a godsend to us because as I said, my daughter doesn't sleep very well at night and she wakes up, sometimes takes her a long time to go back to sleep and I can cope with about an hour or two hours sitting on the rocking chair, but after that, I just wanna lie down and stretch my back. So we have this foldable sofa bed which kind of folds really small and then pulls out into a full size single bed and it's such a godsend. It's even useful when people come over to stay because we can take that into uh, our spare bedroom and put it in there. So yeah, I highly recommend having a little sofa bed in your toddler's bedroom. You never know what the night is gonna be like, and it's also helpful if you have guests coming over. Next, I recommend having blinds and curtains. I find the blinds make the room darker, but the curtains are what give the bedrooms that cozy feel. And also in the winter, it keeps the room a lot warmer because it keeps the draft away from the window. You can get those toddler safe blinds that don't have the pull out cords. Um, in my daughter's bedroom, we have a roll out blind and in my son's bedroom, we have a normal blind, but with the cord shortened at the top and the curtains as well. So we're still to get curtains for her room, but we have curtains and blinds in James's room, my son's room. And I think it's a great idea to have both in a toddler's bedroom. It makes it darker, cozier, and I just find that it works better than having just one or the other. Another really useful item to have in a toddler's bedroom is an easy toddler-friendly door handle. 
that might be something that you'll have to change later on because if you bought a house before you had kids it might not be as friendly for your toddlers but we have round handles which makes it easier for them to kind of hold like with a chunky grip and twist and open their door their bedroom door and also door handles are usually at the level of your toddlers heads so having one of those big long sharp door handles can be quite dangerous for toddlers and we were very lucky that when we bought this house the door handles were all toddler friendly and the round handles are a much much safer option less prone to injuries and easier for them to open and close so that might be one thing that you haven't thought about if your baby is coming into toddlerhood but check your door handles in their bedrooms and make sure that they're safe or if you can change them to be safer even better and the last thing that i recommend having in a toddler's bedroom is big chunky toys that take a lot of space in your living room first it's a good excuse for them to have something to play with in the daytime if they're upstairs playing in their bedrooms or if they wake up early in the morning and you want them to go back to sleep and they're not going back to sleep you can tell them to go and play with their toys things like car garages dolls houses um kitchens and all these big toys and the other reason is that it saves you space in your main living areas wherever you store their toys it's really helpful in the morning when i'm getting them dressed and they have these big toys to play with so that is it these are the 10 things that i recommend having in the toddler bedroom and i hope you guys found this video useful if you did give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new and please list in the comments below the things that you find helpful in your your toddler's bedroom and I'll see you very soon. Bye!